Alright guys, so here's the FPV 40 XL and this is going to be a video, I'm going to call it like the build instructions, construction tips, stuff like that. I'm going to go through the design and talk you through how to build this, but I'm not actually going to build one in this video because those videos take a long time and I just don't have that extra time right now in my day. So anyway, the whole idea behind the FPV 40 project is to make a flying wing with a 40 inch wingspan. I have a single sheet of this Dollar Tree foam board and that's the idea behind the FPV 40 and the FPV 40 XL. And I'll show you how to cut the foam for both of those. So basically, the, the idea is that you cut out two wing halves. You can see here, here's one of the halves and the other half is on the other side of the foam board. And then you connect them together because uh, the width of this is 20 inches and you get a 40 inch wing. So for the FPV 40XL, I'm using this as my FPV platform and it's a wing with a fuselage below. I like the fuselage below because it gets all the stuff off the top of the wing, no battery, FPV gear, stuff like that. It makes it a little bit more aerodynamic and it adds a lot of stability to the wing having the weight hung down low. And for me, I'm not really looking for a really acrobatic FPV plane. All I want is something that's really stable and aerodynamic. So I'm going to go through this construction and point out a few things to you right now. So start out with, this is the fuselage. It is based on Experimental Airlines design. It's uh, his little fuselage uh, tip and how to build these. I'll put a link right here in the video and down below in the info section. So this is... The inside diameter on this is 2 inches, both width and height, and it's 20 inches long. And what I've done is I've cut this out, I put my battery back here, um, I carry another battery up here for the FPV gear, um, there's my camera, OSD is down in here, that's the CE OSD from Foxtech, there's my homemade uh, antenna, GPS for the OSD. And what I do is I put little dowel, dowel rods through here, and that is what holds it on to the wing. I put rubber bands across it. Um, what I recommend you do, if you're using a fuselage with any type of wing, uh, with a disconnecting wing or you're using rubber bands to hold on, is you put a little stopper on here. So you can see I put this little piece of foam board on here. And what this does is I blunted the nose of this wing, and it gives it something to push against, especially since the motor's on the wing. So it has something to like, to like push against to hold it on the fuselage because sometimes when I fly things with rubber bands on there, sometimes it'll come land, it'll be a little bit skewed. So I know that it's been slipping on there. And with something to push against on the fuselage, I found that it eliminates this problem. So that's this. I'm not going to go through construction on this. You can check out Experimental Airlines website for the fuse. So here's the wing. 40-inch um, wing span. And like I said, this is made from uh, a single sheet of Dollar Tree foam board. The root cord here, from here to here, is 13 inches. And the tip cord out here is 10 inches, including 2 inches of Elevon out there. And so you cut this out of the foam board. I'll show you how to do that right now. Um, so first I'll go through the FPV 40, how to cut this out. So for the FPV 40, it's got 420 square inches of wing area and the CG is 8.25 inches back. So what you'll do on one of the long sides is mark here at the corner, 2 inches up, 8 inches up, 20, and then 22 inches up. And then you flip your sheet around and you do those same marks, 0, 2, 8, 20 and 22 then you connect these lines as you can see here and this becomes the the body of the wing and this is the elevon and then the same side and then you just like cut these out and connect them together glue them together down the middle and that's it so this is for the fpv 40 like i said you make those marks now for the fpv 40 xl if you follow this, it'll give you 480 square inches of wing area and the CG is 8.75 inches back from the nose. And the marks you want to make for this one are a little bit different. Um, you want to mark over here 4 and 3 8 inch over uh, from the bottom. Then you mark in the corner 8 inches up, 21 and 23 inches up. Then you connect all these lines. So the 23 
goes to the four and three eighths on the other side. Corner goes to the 21 inch mark, eight to the eight, and so on and so forth. Once again, this becomes the body of the wing. This is the elevon. And as you can see, it doesn't extend out all the way. So you cut this out and you just flip this around. So this becomes the outer edge out here. You can see this little uh, design here matches here on the wing. It was just flipped around. And then I, for each of these wings, I square off the back, um, kind of wherever you want to. Usually I do it like either here or here, square it off, make it wide enough for the whatever size propeller you're going to use. Um, I'm flying it with a 10 inch propeller, so I do 5 inches on each side and I kind of angle this out. Um, so that's how you cut it out. So you cut out and you get these two wing halves. And then you have to be really careful just to make it stable enough in here or else it will be predisposed to the wing to bend right here in the middle or to crack. So what I do is I do a KFM2 airfoil like I do on all of my planes with this half inch pink foam from Home Depot. and just put it half of the wing cord here in the middle and taper it out to the side. And then this adds a lot of stability to the wing. Additionally, I put this strip, this is four inches wide, of the pink foam going all the way back. And then this adds extra stability here. And then I also, on the bottom of the wing, I add strapping tape strips. Um, I do a strip here, right in front of the motor mount, then another one here. I, I don't know if this helps. I like to think that it helps, adding this extra bit of strength, like it helps resist the wing from bending a little bit in like this direction. Uh, I don't know if it actually does, but it gives me a little bit of peace of mind. And for the rest of the construction of this wing, I'm going to refer you to my other build video for the uh, pusher prop version of my smaller delta wing. You know, I use these same, these are seven and a half inches long. I embed the servos in here. I show you how to do that in the other build video. Put the motor on here however you want to mount your motor. You can do a stick mount, put it up here, do whatever. This is a motor mount from uh, Experimental Airlines, thanks to Ed uh, for this design, hooking me up with some of these. These are made out of titanium, really lightweight. Uh, check them out on YouTube. It's got a lot of good building videos. I'll put a little link here to the motor mount video. That's basically it. I blunt the nose so it has so it can push against this uh, this little part right here, and that's about it. And this plane I found is really stable. It's easy to build. You know, it's it's a great FPV platform. I love having the fuselage because I can put all of my gear in here. It keeps the top of the wing clean, it makes it a little bit more aerodynamic, adds some stability. And I've been really happy with this. I've been getting great results. Uh, it's definitely my favorite FPV plane. I like it because it's a smaller wing and you know I can carry, I really like flying with the OSD for uh, FPV. If you don't have one I'd really recommend getting one. It's great knowing how much battery you've used, how far from home you are and all of that. But you do need to carry OSD, you need a little bit more wing area because it's going to add weight because you have the board in here, you have the current sensor, you have your GPS and all of that. So I hope that this answers all of your questions about the FPV. 40 and the 40XL. Um, I think with this, I think you have more than enough information to build it. Let me know what questions you have. Thanks for watching.